And if you're going to be a, an effective leader, you have to have the humility to listen and to understand and to understand across the entire spectrum of thought. Good Monday afternoon and thank you so much for joining us for News 19 at noon. I'm Darcy Strickland. We begin today hearing from the new president elect at the University of South Carolina. For the first time in more than a decade, USC now has a new president. Retired General Robert Caslin was named the new president following a controversial vote by the university's board of trustees on Friday. And this morning, Caslin met with reporters. Joining us now live from USC with more is News 19's Jacob Reynolds. Jacob, what did President Caslin talk about this morning? Darcy, that press conference just ended and he started it by saying his goal was to engage and listen to the, to the university campus. Of course, his presidency starting with controversy after the weeks long uh, back and forth between state lawmakers, students, faculty, staff, including the governor, about what was going on with his candidacy for the president's position. He said he wanted to engage with those people. He wanted to listen to them. He was doing his best to learn from them. And he said he was already getting that process started. Started. Earlier this morning, he said he had already met with a cross section of the student body, hearing from them, and uh, he talked at length about that in his press conference. And here's what he said. First thing this morning that I felt was extremely important was to sit down with a cross section of students. They were incredible. That's why we're here is to serve our students. I got some great feedback from them about some of the student activities that are coming up. They gave me great advice on the visibility of a president. They talked to me about diversity and why diversity is so important. We reflected about my comments from back in April and had a good discussion about that. We talked about sustainability. At one point really that I valued was the discussion that we had on mental health and the mental health efforts of the University of South Carolina and the mental health needs of our, of our students. During the balance of the day and all the way through Wednesday, I'm gonna to continue to meet with faculty staff, alumni, university contributors, community leaders, and others. And that process does not just end this week. It's going to continue. Every one of our stakeholders deserves a voice, and every member of, the, of Team Carolina should not only feel valued, they should know that they are indeed a valued member of the team. You know, people have asked me, why in the world, Kazan, would you want to come to South Carolina after such controversy? And frankly, that's a question I have also asked myself many times. But the honest answer I kept coming back to was the students. I love education. Moreover, I love what it does for young men and women from all walks of life who aspire to better themselves through education and who want to go back and contribute to their communities. This next generation inspires me. They come to a university not only to take the requisite hours to earn a degree and to get a job, but they're eager to engage and they're eager to make a difference in the world. And with regard to that mission, I'm all in. And Darcy, we do want to say he did clarify those comments he made in April about sexual assault, saying it was never his intention to blame victims. And another one of his priorities is to learn the campus's sexual assault and sexual violence procedures and to make it an open campus to discuss those issues. And at the end of the press conference, I did go up to him, ask him if he had any message he wanted to send out to the community. And he said, beat Clemson. Reporting in the University of South Carolina, Jacob Reynolds, News 19, WLTX. Jacob, thank you so much. Well, during that news conference, he told reporters to simply address him as Bob Caslin. He says he's moved forward from his 43 year career in the military and wants the community to know him as Bob and not as general. His first day will be September 16th, but he says he will be attending events on campus and around the community before that first day. Current President Harris Pastides did release his first statement on the new president. Pastides says the next chapter for the university is a meaningful one. He acknowledges that he does know Caslin well from National Committee work and he looks forward to welcoming Caslin and his wife to the community. Pastides went on to say that he encourages students and faculty as they move into the new school year. He says, quote, there is no doubt the last few months have been difficult and have been strained within our Carolina family. From time to time that happens in every family and I know we will show the world the strength of the ties that bind us together. Let us pledge to work together and 
begin the healing and reconciliation as we seek to move our great university forward. Pastides retires on July 31st. And State Senator Dick Harpootlian plans to work to change the way the university selects its board of trustees. In a letter, Harpootlian says, when the Senate returns, I look forward to supporting Senate Bill 798 to reform the board. The bill would reduce the size of the board from 17 members to eight. Elected members would be chosen from seven congressional districts instead of judicial circuits with one at-large member appointed by the governor. Trustees would serve four years, but members would stay in place until a successor is elected and qualified.